Welcome to the Coffee Clutch. Today's old saying is the love of money is the root to all evil. Grab your cup and let's get started. It is over 2,000 year old saying and still as relevant today as ever before. This old saying is found in the Bible in Paul's letter to Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Very interesting when you read the entire context there, because not only is the love of money the root of all evil, but it can bring many sorrows. And of course, we always think that if we have money, we're going to be happier and life's going to be better and everything is wonderful. But that's not necessarily the case, especially when money is the sole purpose of your life rather than wanting to make money so that you can provide so that you can have some security so that you can enjoy it with others it's the sharing of the money that brings you the most joy i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being wealthy and rich and i think that's a great thing actually there's many people who are very talented making money, but you don't want to have money at the expense of living a happy life. And what do I mean by that? Well, we certainly know if we've watched any um, Hallmark movies, it's an age-old theme. Every one of their movies is kind of based on it. You know, the young uh, professional who goes off from the small town to the big city to make their fortune, and they spend day and night working to the exclusion of any friendships or relationships and their family goes to the wayside and all they do is spend their time working to make money to have power and for the next promotion and what happens is typically they go back to their small town they reunite with their first true love and they get married and live happily ever after and now I'm really not knocking that theme because I enjoy a good Hallmark movie especially if it's at Christmas time. Everybody loves a good, a fun love story. But the reason we enjoy those stories is because there's some truth to the message. And the message can really be very simple. It's not the idea that you want to be successful that's a problem, and it's not wrong to want to make a good living. That's not a problem. But it is a problem when all other things go to the wayside just so that you can have that money. And we see in Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, Scrooge isn't happy until he shares his money and gives his clerk the promotion that he deserves. The man is giddy with excitement and joy and the opportunity to use his money properly. Now, I'm not telling anybody how to use their money uh, you know, specifically. That's each individual's decision. I'm just saying that overall, you want your life to be one that creates joy and beauty and holiness in the world and brings happiness to other people. And in that, in that um, way of life, you will find a happiness. And it's important to know that and understand that when you're young, because when you're old like me, you don't want to look back and think, well, what was I doing? What have I done? I made money. But what did you do with the money? Did you buy a lot of things? And buying things, that can be great fun. But there's no end to buying. And if your appetite becomes insatiable, that no matter what you buy, no matter how big your home, no matter how fancy your car, you want the next fancier one or the next bigger home or the next sparkly item, for what? You should want those things so that you can share and create real friendships and real relationships and have the love of your neighbor because you are kind to them, because you are charitable to them. And I don't mean you're buying their love. I mean you're giving them of your time. And sometimes money provides you more time. Sometimes once you've made a lot of money, you have more time to, to give of yourself. 
And so that money has provided you an opportunity that you might not otherwise have had. And that you can use that, that time wisely and richly and in charity. And there you will find your joy and your happiness. So be careful, especially to those of you who are young and you're excited about getting out there in the world and making your fortune. And I, like I said, I'm not knocking that. It's wonderful to be prepared. It's wonderful to have money that, and the security that that money can provide you. I'm simply saying don't do it at the cost of all other things. There was a research um, paper that was done in Princeton, I believe it was, where they interviewed people to determine the degree of happiness and how it was associated with income. Their conclusion, whether right or wrong, was interesting, which stated that happiness increased as people got closer to the $75,000 a year salary. Once they went over the $75,000 a year salary, happiness did not seem to increase. But the further you went away from the $75,000 uh, yearly salary in a to the lower um, incomes, the m less happy people seem to be. And I thought this was interesting because I don't think it takes much to understand that when you are poor and you do not have the means to pay for your life, your, your life, your, your home, your, your um, food, your clothing, all the things that you need money for, it's a lot of stress and a lot of concern, day-to-day -day stress, just wondering how you're going to meet those bills. So it's not um, a mystery as to why somebody can not feel happy in those circumstances. But what I did think was rather interesting was that once you got to an income that provided you with a pleasant home and a good sense of security, your clothing, your food, your car, you weren't really concerned about how your bills were going to be paid. Even if you're not, you weren't living in the lap of luxury, your level of happiness was kind of set at that point and that having more did not necessarily overall bring people more happiness. That's interesting to think about. I think it kind of makes sense too if you consider that you, you should be able to be happy at a certain level, that level where you are secure, where you know you are in a safe neighborhood and like I said, a pleasant home and your bills are met. When you reach that point, you should be able to relax and, and enjoy your life a little bit more and to really be cognizant of the blessing that you have in your life and to make certain that you take time to be with your family, be with your friends, be with your loved ones, because your life is finite. It will come to an end. And it will be most important to you as you're older that you have spent your time wisely. And having a lot of money does not always mean you will spend your time wisely. So as you're gathering your fortune, or maybe you already have your fortune, consider how you're using it or how you plan to use it. And remember that while it money brings you security, and with that a certain level of calm and peace in your life, it does not replace time and effort that you put into your family and your loved ones. Make sure you always have time for that. Make sure you have time to be charitable, do beautiful things, do holy things, and you will feel fulfilled at the end of your life. And if at the end of your life you have a lot of money, well then, hooray, nothing wrong with that. But make sure you have friends and loved ones and that looking back you will know you have done what good you could for those in need. And that's where your joy and happiness will lie. If you've enjoyed this video, please push the like button. I hope you come back to visit. Subscribe if you haven't. And enjoy that cup of coffee.